Did you know in Inkscape you can put patterns or objects along a predetermined path? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how. Hello my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another tutorial video and today I'm going to be showing you how you can make all of your objects sit along a predetermined path just like the ones you can see on screen right now. So without further ado, let's get started. Now when it comes to putting your objects on a path, first you need to have an object that you want to put on the path. Now as you can see I've created a circle and a square of two different colours so it's easy to differentiate between the two. Before we get started though we're going to need to convert these to a path. So I'm going to select both of them, go to path, object to path. And now if I was to select one of them, you can see it is a path. It's no longer an ellipse and the square is no longer an actual square. It is a path that looks like a square. Now, in order to do this, we're going to use a path effect. So you are going to need the path effects menu open. You can find that by going to the top, selecting path, scroll all the way down until you get to path effects dot dot dot. Select that and it will bring your path effects menu up on the right hand side like you can see right here. Once you have that menu open then we have to have a predetermined path that we want to put these shapes on. Now the method I'm about to show you has its own pros and cons but I will show you a different method near the end of this video in order to get around them. So we're going to start with the square to begin with just so I can show you some of the problems that you might encounter when using this method. Because we have this path like a square we are going to right click and we're going to copy it. With that copied we are now going to create a path for it to sit on and for this the best way I can show you what might happen is by using another circle. So I'm going to use the circle and ellipses tool on the left hand side and I'm just going to draw a circle while holding shift and control so it can be completely symmetrical. Again we are going to go to path, object to path to convert this into a path. Now with that done and with it still selected we are going to go over to the path effects menu. If you click this arrow you will get a list of all the different path effects. For this one we are going to be using the distort section and we're going to be using this, the pattern along path. Select that and this menu will open up. Now do you remember when we copied the square? Well that was for a reason. Whatever you copy enters onto your clipboard and from your clipboard you can use it in a multitude of different ways. From using the spray can tool right here you can spray clones or copies of that selection. But for this we are using the pattern along path live path effect. So for this we're going to come to this little padlocked feature here. And when you highlight it it will say link to path in clipboard. Now what that's going to mean is as soon as we select it, it's going to use the path that we have selected, which is this circle here. And it's going to copy all of the things that we selected to copy onto that path. So we're going to select it now. And as you can see, it doesn't look like much has changed. It just looks like you've got a really thick stroke. Well, that's because it has taken this shape, put it on the path and then stretched it all the way around. This is signified by this drop down here where it says one single shape stretched. Now, when you open this drop down, you will see repeated, repeated stretched, single and single stretched. If I was to put repeated, not much would change but as you can see now if we took this and we stretched it around in a circle shape this would be these two corners here 
and these two corners will be stretched all the way around until they got to here. This is shown even more if you select repeated stretched. And now it looks like it's one complete shape again. Single means you will just get the single shape like this. Now, if you break it up into just one piece and you stretch it around the path, this is the effect that you will get. But again, if you select single and stretched, it will look like it did in the beginning. But if we use a more complex shape, like the stars and polygons tool, for example, let's go with the stars with five corners. Now, as you can see, I've created a new circle and this time I have made it red to match the star that I have just created as well. The star has more points and is more complex than a simple circle or square. So you will get more of an accurate representation of what will happen when you put the object onto the path. So, of course, this star is still registered as a star as signified down here at the bottom. So we're going to need to go to path, object to path. And now, as you can see, it's saying that it's a path at the bottom. With that selected as a path, we can right click, copy. Then we can select the path that we want to put the shape on. Again, we will repeat the same process. We will go to the path effects, pattern along path, and then we are going to go to link to path in clipboard. Now, as you can see, a lot has changed in comparison to the square. At the moment, it is on one single shape that's been stretched. So we've got the start point and the end point right here on the right hand side. And as you can see, it has now stretched the star all the way around. However, if we was to go on repeated, you can see the difference it makes. Now, this isn't level. As you can see, there is a slant on it. And that means that this is going to have a slant on it too. And when it goes all the way around, it will fit as many stars as possible in between. Now, a few little added extras for you to know. When it comes to the gaps in between, you can come to this section here where it says spacing. And if we put, say, five, as you can see, this brings it more in line. So there's a smaller gap where the start and end points are, but has made all the other gaps consistent. Now, if you don't want this small gap at the end, you can just go to repeated stretched. And as you can see now, it is a complete circle and it's mirrored perfectly. However, one more thing worth noting when it comes to this path effect is whatever changes you make to your initial selection or the selection you copied, it will reflect in the path that you put them on. So if I was to decrease the size of this star, for example, as you can see, all the stars on the path become smaller or larger depending on how big the initial selection is. You can do exactly the same when it comes to rotating and it will be mirrored again. But once you've got whatever you want, you can then select the path that you put all your shapes on and go path, object to path. And as you can see, the path effect has now disappeared. So now you have a completely separate shape that you can manipulate in any way that you want. But you can also go further than that. For example, if you wanted to use this shape, but you didn't want the top half, you can go to path, break apart. And now it has separated all the shapes into their individual star shapes now you can select the ones that you don't want and hit delete and as you can see we now have the rest and if we select them all you can rotate them 
and obviously I'm not being exact but say you just wanted the stars over the top of a logo or some kind of branding or anything you could put your branding right there and you can see the effects that you can get now this works with almost any shape and you can put it on any path that you want so for example if we come to our bezier pen if we create a curved line something that looks a little bit like that and all i did there was click and drag in order to get the curve and then when i got to the end i right clicked to finalize that path there so now we have an open path with a point on each end well again you can come to one of the other shapes that you want to use a circle for this might be perfect you can right click copy and then select the path you want to put it on and go into your path effects and selecting pattern along path you can put repeated and there you go you now have got the circles on the path now the reason that these circles are not filled in blue is because it will use the properties of the path that you are putting the shapes on so as you saw the curved line i was using was just a simple black stroke with no fill so if we was to come down to our color swatches at the bottom we could then change it to blue and we can get rid of the stroke by holding shift and selecting the x and there you go now one of the issues that you might have already noticed while i've been demonstrating this feature is simply the fact that it is distorted as you can see this one for example on the end is slightly oblong more like an egg than it is a complete circle and if i was to pull this one down you can see the difference between the two just like this that is where the second method will come in handy say you wanted to put this star on this path well you can do that simply by going to the fill and stroke menu and using markers markers are something that not many people know about because it's hidden within the menus but is really really fun to use and can give you the exact look that you're aiming for so when it comes to doing that first you need to select the shape that you want to copy but instead of going to copy this time we are going to go to object scroll down to where it says objects to marker select that and you will see the star disappear just like that now what that has done is allowed you to use it as a marker now a couple of things to keep in mind when it comes to using markers if i was to select the path that i want to put the marker on and then select the edit path by nodes tool there are three nodes we have the end node here the center node here and another end node here the markers will only ever be placed on where the nodes are so if you was to place any markers now there would be three one two three but let's show you how for this we're going to need the fill and stroke menu if you haven't got it open you can find it on the top toolbar right here click that and it will open up this menu now if you're on the fill tab you need to be on the stroke style tab and as you can see there is this markers section with three boxes these markers will signify the start point the middle and the end points now normally when you open this you will see all of these options as you can see the star that we created and made a marker is now right here and you can see that it's right here on the start point now if we click in the middle you will see another one right here and then of course the end is right there 
Now, when it comes to these points, you can use these points in any way you want. You have options here to turn the size down. So if we say turn it down from what it is to 50, it, they will all reduce in size. Now this little button here means that no matter what you select in this top bar, it will link with the bottom. The X represents the width, so from left to right, and the Y represents the top to bottom, so the height. So like I said, it all depends on how many of the nodes you have. Now by selecting my nodes tool, you can see the three nodes have appeared again. If I was to select all of them nodes and then come up to just above the select tool, you can see it says insert new nodes into selected segments or you can take them away. We are going to add nodes. And as we add them, as you can see, we now have more stars. Now, if you do not want the stroke visible in the background, you can just come down to the color swatches, hold shift and press the red X. And now you have the path still there, as you can see when it highlights blue, like this. But it isn't visible at all. So my friends, that is how you can put objects along a predetermined path. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, then leave me a comment in the comment section down below. If you would like me to create something for you, then please, by all means, get in touch. But until next week's video, I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell. Say thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.